what's happening in China using artificial intelligence to surveil people is astonishing. But in many ways, all that information is being collected in the West as well. It's just it's not collated in the that, same that's way. That's correct. And uh, this is perhaps one of the scariest aspects of it. What we're talking about here is facial recognition by closed circuit television. Well, it starts with facial recognition, but we've now got to the stage where in China in particular, they can recognize you from the back by your gait, by all kinds of things. And what has happened is, and you can see the positive benefit, police want to arrest criminals or thugs or rowdies even in a football crowd. And so using facial recognition technology, they can pick a person out and arrest him or her. Well, okay, but what it can be used for good purposes in that sense in keeping law and order can also become, particularly in an autocratic state, become an instrument of control. And here's the huge dilemma which people try to solve. How much of your privacy are you prepared to sacrifice for security? There's a tension between those two things. Now, in China, you mentioned, and you're probably thinking about Xinjiang, where you've got a minority, a Muslim minority of Uyghur people. The surveillance level on them is, is unbelievable. Every few hundred meters down the street, they have to stop, they have to hand in their smartphones. The smartphones are loaded with all kinds of stuff by the government. Their houses have QR codes outside them as to how many people live there and all this kind of thing. And I don't know how many, it's way over a million, I believe, are being held as a result of what is being picked up by artificial intelligence systems in re-education centers. And the suspicion is that the, the culture is being destroyed and eradicated. That's the one hand, that's in one particular province. But elsewhere in China, we have now the social credit system that apparently will be rolled out in the entire country. We're given, say, you and I were given to start with, let's say, 300 social credit points. And we're being trailed. If we um, fail to put our rubbish uh, trash can out at night, there'll be marks against us. If we go to somewhere dubious or mix with someone whose political loyalties are suspect, we'll get more negative points. On the other hand, if we pay our debts on time and go green, so to speak, and all this kind of thing, we will amass more credit points. And then if we are going negative, the penalties kick in. We'll discover we can't get into our favorite restaurant. We'll discover we don't get that promotion or don't even get that job we apply for or that we can't travel, or that we can't even have a credit card. And this is being rolled out, and the list of penalties and, and things that have actually been recorded is just very serious. Now, what amazed me when I first came across this was the fact that many people welcome this. They yeah. think it's wonderful. They both, I've got a thousand points. How many have you got? And they don't realize that the whole of life is becoming controlled in the interests, ostensibly, of having a healthy society. So it is, talk about 1984. Now, this is not futuristic speculation. This is already happening. George Orwell, you mentioned him, who wrote 1984. He talked about Big Brother watching you and uh, that technology would eventually, it is doing it. This is narrow AI. This is not futuristic in any way. It's what's actually happening at the moment. And you mentioned briefly the fact that all this stuff exists in the West, except, and the point has been made forcibly, it's not quite yet under one central authority and control, but it is coming. We have credit searches. We have all kinds of stuff that is beginning to creep in in the US and 
in the UK and I presume also in Australia. And also we have even police forces here, I believe, who want the whole caboodle in here and want to be able to exert a much more serious level of control. And it is frightening because what it does for human rights is, is well. So, so it occurs to me that, you know, I love history, as I've mentioned, authoritarian regimes have collapsed under their own weight. Typically, the people have risen up one way or another and there's been an overturning. We've never had autocratic regimes that have had this surveillance capacity. There's, you know, an estimated 400 million closed circuit television sets in China. That, that's one for about every three people. I mean, it's mind boggling. Oh, it is mind boggling. And even here in the UK, what I'm told is that you're on a closed circuit TV camera every five minutes when you're moving around. So it is very serious. And of course, the irony is, as I hinted at earlier, here we are with our smartphones that have got all these capacities, certainly at the audio level, and we're voluntarily wearing them. So we're voluntarily ceding uh, part of our autonomy and our rights, really, to, to these machines when we don't really know what is being done with all the information. So we have a huge problem. And someone has said we're sleepwalking into all of this so that we're captured by it, we're imprisoned by it, and we wake up too late because the central authority has got so much control that we cannot escape anymore. So let's go back to where I started. Science is blessing us because they are fantastic, a lot of these things, uh, you know, with incredible technology and capabilities that you've alluded to some of the useful things. I mean, I, I love the way in which I can, in my car, say, hey, Siri, call my wife. I mean, yes. That, that's just fantastic. But... But the, my, my, my question about what we now believe goes to the heart of who do we think we are, what is our status, on what basis will we be alert enough to recognise we need to make tough decisions, and then on what basis will we make the ethical decisions around how far this goes? I know it's a complicated question, but... There's another element to it because we haven't even got into general artificial intelligence yet. We're still talking, mm -hmm. as I understand it, about narrow artificial intelligence, just masses of it. Yes, we Those are. surveillance cameras uh, and the people at their desks in Beijing, uh, you know, collating the information and what have you, there might be a lot of information and a lot of capability, but those cameras can't think of another task, uh, you know, how to go and bring my boss a cup of coffee. It's still narrow. That's absolutely right. And it's before we've got to general intelligence. Yes. And what we've got to realize several things. First of all, the, the speed of technological development outpaces ethical underpinning yeah. by a huge factor, an exponential factor. Secondly, some people are becoming acutely aware that they need to think about ethics. Yeah. And some of the global players, to be fair, do think about this because they find the whole development scary. Is it going to get out of control? And uh, someone made a very interesting point. Uh, I think it was a mathematician who works in artificial intelligence. And she was referring to the book of Genesis in the Bible. She said, God created something and got out of control, us. We are now concerned that our creations may get out of control. And I suppose in particular, one major concern is autonomous or self-guiding weapons. And, and that's a huge ethical field. Here's a, a man sitting in a trailer in the Nevada desert, and he's controlling a drone in the Middle East, and it fires a rocket uh, and destroys a group of people. And of course, he just sees a puff of smoke on his screen and that's it done. And there's huge distance between the operation of that lethal mechanism. And we only go up one more from that, where these lethal flying bombs, so to speak, 
control themselves. We got swarming drones and we got all kinds of stuff. Who's going to police that? And of course, every country wants them because they want them to have uh, a military uh, advantage. So we trying to police that and to get international agreement, which some people are trying to do. Now, I don't think we must be too negative about this. And I'm cautious here, but we did manage, at least temporarily, who knows what's going to happen now, to get nuclear weapons at least controlled and partly banned. So some success, but whether with what's happening in Ukraine at the moment with Putin and so on, whether he, he could shoot a nuclear tactical weapon or it could be controlled autonomously, make its own decision. Yeah, but uh, And then where do we go from there? And these things are exercising people at a much lower level, but it's still the same. How do you write an ethical program for self-driving cars? Yeah. So that if there's an accident, it can't be avoided. Yes. Which... Do you? Well, what do you knock down? It's the, it's the switch tracks dilemma yeah. again um, that you put before ethical students of ethics. And it's very interesting to see how people respond. The switch tracks dilemma is simply that you have a train hurtling down a track and there's a point and it can be directed down the left hand or the right hand side. Down the left hand side, there's a crowd of children stranded in a bus on the track. On the right hand side, there's an old man sitting in his cart with a donkey. And you are holding the lever. Do you direct the train to hit the children or the old man? That kind of thing. But we're faced with that all the time. And it's hugely difficult without going near AGI yet.